details from Star Wars Episode 7 weren't the only thing J.J. Abrams has been hiding for the past year. In a surprise to everyone, J.J. Abrams and Paramount Pictures have released a trailer for 10 Cloverfield Lane. Is this a sequel to the 2008 Matt Reeves monster movie Cloverfield? Kind of. Here's what J.J. Abrams told Collider.com. The idea came up a long time ago during production. We wanted to make it a blood relative of Cloverfield. The idea was developed over time. We wanted to hold back the title for as long as possible. Not only did the teaser come out of nowhere, the release date for 10 Cloverfield Lane is actually only a few months away and drops on March 11th this year. The movie is being directed by Dan Trachtenberg and stars John Goodman, Mary Elizabeth Winston, and John Gallagher Jr. as three people that are confined in a cellar due to a disaster that they've been told is happening above ground. Dennis, what do you make of the surprise announcement and teaser trailer for 10 Cloverfield Lane? Well, I mean, for all intents and purposes, we're going to call it Cloverfield 2. We know it's not exactly <laughs> Cloverfield 2. It's called 10 Cloverfield Lane, but that's what we're going to call it. We put it in the title. Uh, I'm super excited about this. One, I enjoyed the first one. I mean, it wasn't my favorite movie, but I'd like the movie going experience of, uh, of seeing the first one. I, I like that this is a surprise. We, we you know, generally we're a little pessimistic in, the, in this kind of community because we kind of know what's coming, right? We've all we see i mean i can't remember the last time i was this surprised maybe when they announced batman v superman at comic-con maybe two years ago mm -hmm. i had no idea that was coming and, and this was a huge surprise for me and I, I i the trailer for me got me excited for it uh perry what did you think even then with what you're saying about surprises with batman versus superman it's like you hear a surprise like that and you get all pumped for it then but then you're like oh no like i've got how many years yeah. or how many months to wait for it this <laughs> this is coming like we just got this it looks incredible and it's coming really soon i'm a huge cloverfield nut i've been watching the movie kind of over and over ever since the movie came out and while i do have some issues with found footage that was one of the the first found footage movies that I watched, I'm like, I, I kind of want to make something like that. It feels like I could do that, which I guess could be turned in a negative way, but I think that's an incredible movie. And this looks, this looks like something else, like low budget, three characters, really intimate setting. And that trailer just drives you through the story in such a perfect way where ever so slowly, it kind of teases something's not right, something's not right until you get to that window at the end and you're like, Cut to black, I need to know what's outside the window, also because I need to know how it fits into this Cloverfield universe. Mark? I am going to be missing so much college basketball this March. Between the Cloverfield movie coming out now with Batman v Superman and Daredevil on Netflix, like my March is stacked with just this kind of stuff, and I'm pumped about that because this trailer was awesome. J.J. Abrams does a lot of things well. He crushes one thing, and that's hatches. Just like the Dharma Initiative in, in Lost, that's, I felt like I was back in that hatch on that island because it's just, okay, we're just hanging out. Just we, we got nothing else to do. We got nowhere to go, and then all of a sudden somebody makes a run for it, and you're right. It, it built up such a level of suspense watching that it was a perfectly crafted trailer and it's going to have everybody buzzing about what the hell is this movie in relation to the first Cloverfield to me it felt like it was taking place somewhere else that's not a big city where maybe the events of Cloverfield have just happened and so whatever the the government or the powers that be the military had to do to quell that threat maybe the fallout from that is what we're dealing with in 10 Cloverfield Lane but that's again we're just all speculating at this point and then speaking of J.J. Abrams, I mean, he's not directing it, but he's producing right. it. He had the perfect distraction. He was working on Star Wars The Force Awakens, right? So everyone's concentrated on that. They want to ask him questions about that. They're trying to get all these details. And over on the side, he, he's secretly producing this movie. And he secretly produced this movie with an absolutely incredible cast. There was also a quote that we had gotten from Mary Elizabeth Winstead a while back. I think it might have been while she was promoting Faults, which is actually kind of similar to this because it's one of those situations where it's like you don't know who's telling the truth. And it seems like they're going to play with that really well here. And she's incredible in that movie. If you haven't seen Faults, I highly recommend checking it out also with this coming out. But we've also got, and I'm going to say his name wrong, Dan Dan. Trachtenberg, the director. <laughs> if you haven't seen his short film, which is on YouTube right now, it's called Portal No Escape. It's like six, seven minutes. It almost feels like a uh, futuristic uh, music video, kind of, where some woman is trying to escape from a room. I mean, it's actually yeah, it's a, a fan, little it's a similar. It's a film that's based on Portal the Video oh, Game. Oh, really? <laughs> and so he did that, and he got a lot of attention it's from this. It's incredible. Yeah, this is his first feature film that he kind of got from doing this short film. That ever He's done, I think, a few shorts and maybe a little like internet stuff before. He's actually from... Um, 
that one show on Revision for three. I forgot what the name of it, but he's, he, he was uh, like a host. He used to talk on, on shows, but he also was a filmmaker on the side. So I'm excited to see what he can do, especially given what he was able to do with the small budget portal. Oh my, the way he manipulates the portals for the fight sequences, it kind of just blew my mind. I just want to go check out the original Cloverfield again, too. Like, I want to go revisit that, see if I can find some sort of clue, because if they came up with this idea during production for that, it's like, okay, maybe it's, he said it's a blood relative. I'm still trying to figure out, is it an aunt, is it an uncle? Is it a brother? What the hell is this in relation to the first one? Yeah, and also, is it actually connected? I mean, at all, it, right? At all, because maybe it's a, a spiritual type of thing where it's like a, a Twilight Zone or a Black Mirror thing where it's okay, it's the name Cloverfield. Is Cloverfield going to be a franchise going forward that like it's going to deal with maybe a, a lower budget kind of smaller cast type of thing that has something to do with a. A, a disaster or you know and, and is that the through line for all these black mirror was the first thing that came to mind when i first saw this thing and saw the the title card at the end i i think that if it's not connected to cloverfield enough mm -hmm. that title card is going to feel like jj abrams and his team kind of pulling the rug out from under us i don't think he would have done what he did with the with the end title where you have cloverfield and then the rest of it fades mm -hmm. in if it really wasn't like firmly connected but at the end of cloverfield they dropped the bomb to kill should I not spoil that? <laughs> it's been it's been out for okay. a long time. They dropped the bomb to kill the monster, so it's and they mentioned that it's like a nuclear fallout. So I'm I'm assuming that's how it's connected. But then I think some of the details is like the two other two characters uh, are listening to John Goodman and what he says about what's going on up there. So it's not exact. There's a lot of manipulation. It's supposed to be a thriller as well, which makes me think a little Walking Dead, mm -hmm. like where Rick wakes up in the entire world. Like maybe something happened to the two of them where they were, I don't know, knocked unconscious or in a coma, and then they come to and he just happened to rescue them. I I don't know. You gotta we're gonna know more about this story by the time the movie comes out. We'll get another trailer. We'll get a little oh, bit yeah. of a hint as to what this is. But it would be kind of cool to just go into a theater March 11th knowing we're paying to see this one thing we saw a teaser trailer for and we really have no idea what the fallout is. Yeah, because people have always been saying, wouldn't it be cool if like something like a, a Avengers all of a sudden they dropped it and it came out three months later? Well, it could never happen with a movie that big, right. but something like this works. I just hope that that end sequence in the trailer is the end of the first act, though. Like If that happens at the end of the movie or towards the end of the movie, I'm going to be very disappointed that that like there we don't get to see what's out there. You don't want to see a movie about John Goodman drinking a beer, putting a puzzle together for two hours, and uh, then something happens. Is it, wasn't that called Roseanne that he was in? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.